All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Real Sales Talk, a show for salespeople by salespeople, which I absolutely love. I've got a lot to talk about tonight. I'm sure you do as well. Henry, uh, this is season two. No, sorry. This is season one, episode two of Real Sales Talk. And we're going to be talking about five ways to growth hack professional development. And I know I've got some good tricks and tips to share. And I'm sure you do, Henry. Excited to get into our first, our second episode. And uh, we, we got the cobwebs, cobwebs out from, from uh, episode one. Now we're like, now we're official. This is episode <laughs> two. <laughs> there episode we go. two. Yep. Rock and roll. So, Henry, what do you got? What's going on yeah, with you? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, nothing much. Um, I, I'm actually out in Chicago right now um, doing some, some traveling to see some of our resellers here uh, um, that, that uh, resell my, my product here at Zerto. Um, and wanted to uh, kind of kick this off with just the uh, – you know, the, I know we talked about the um, giveaway that we were going to be doing from yesterday. Yep. So I figured, I, I yep. mean, from last last meeting, uh, so I figured I'd start off with that um, in regards to, so I had, let me look at the name here of the lady, Ver, book, Veronica. Right? Yeah, Giving give away the Ask Gary V book, Veronica Shoe, uh, or, or I, think it's, I think it's pronounced Shoe, S-C-H-O-O. Veronica, mm -hmm. thanks for joining the uh, the um, mailing list, and that book will be on its way to you. So we'll send you an email um, so we can get some information on where to send it, and you let us know when yep. it will arrive. So, yes. What, my favorite yes. book of 2016, so uh, I think you will enjoy it. I think that's one of my favorites, too. I'm um, almost done. I'm probably... Maybe maybe eighty five percent ninety percent done there. Done there. Um, was reading it on the plane. Oh, you haven't finished it yet. No, no, no. I, I hit it heavy um, when I was when I was doing travel into Ohio and Michigan, um, mm -hmm. and then I had like three weeks where I was at home and just just life is crazy um, uh, when I'm home. So uh, yeah, I'm almost done though. I was reading quite a bit. I, I bet I'll finish it on the on the plane ride home. Uh, yeah. To Denver, so, so I'm in San Diego. Uh, this is I, I love I love this man. I love the fact that we're like we're doing this show while we're traveling on the road mm -hmm. selling things. So um, this is this is real life. This is real sales talk, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, so actually, I mean, before we kind of get into to, to everything else, one thing I wanted to say before we kind of get into that is. Uh, um, so, guys, remember uh, just around the the, uh, the hashtag, you know, hashtag re real sales talk, you know, for social chatter, especially Twitter, right? Uh, I'm big into Twitter. Uh, Sean, I know, is also big into Twitter. You know, if you guys are, are chatting about real sales talk there at all, please, you know, link us up uh, re re either at me, talk to Henry J, at Sean, Sean and Mitchell. Um, and the real sales talk hashtag real sales talk. You know, we we'll, we we'll love to engage with people and get get going there. So uh, have some fun there. But hey, Sean, but before we kind of moved into you know the entire episode, I want to hear more about your trip. You know, how how is it going being out in San Diego? Yeah, San Diego is an awesome city. It's actually one of my favorite cities to travel to. The beach, the vibe, the weather, uh, the food is incredible. Uh, they've got some great. Uh, craft beer, craft breweries here. One of them, well, one of them being Ballast Point. Actually, they got acquired by a large conglomerate, alcohol, adult beverage conglomerate. So I don't know if we can consider them a craft craft brewer, brewer anymore. But um, Ballast Point, it's one of my favorite favorite uh, breweries based out of San Diego. Really, really tasty. Um, so all is good. We're I just finished day two of a risk management conference convention and uh, our company is is representing uh at this uh expo we have a we have a 20 by 20 booth and 
and uh, it's actually been very profitable for me um, so far. Yeah, uh, it's not over. We got we got a, a whole other day, but there's my stack of business cards. There's there's probably ten opportunities in there, and if I were to take a guess, two hundred thousand dollars of potential revenue. So there you oh, go. Um, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Um, one of them being, where where is it? This is a good one. I'm like uh, talking to this guy. I talk to these two guys and uh, look down at his his name tag, and it's I don't know if you recognize that logo. If it shows up right right oh. or reverse, but it says IKEA. Oh. <laughs> um, that's a pretty big deal. So that that one alone <laughs> could be could be million dollars million dollars worth of revenue. So. You know, it's it's amazing. I realized uh, how you can call an email and call an email someone, but the moment that you meet them in person, it's like, oh yeah, man, I'd love to talk with you. This is this is this is a great product, and they, you know, it's yeah. like they they've never heard of you before, and so me, meeting them in person is really <laughs> really key. <laughs> Game changer, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I I I, ha I had a meeting today, a, a lunch meeting. And I, I'm talking to, you know, over email, I was talking to this guy and he's like, yeah, I want, you know, plan on making the purchase probably Q2. And I get there and th this is actually kind of typically the, the opposite of what you kind of find. But uh, I get there and he's like, yeah, like, you know, we were thinking about making it, but it's really expensive. So he's like, you know, starts trying to like haggle a bit and then, or, or not even haggle, just it, it didn't seem nearly as much like he was pretty planning on buying it in Q2. And then, but because we were there, I was able to kind of see his body language and everything. We were able to have a little more detailed discussion on why not, what the process is, who, who's telling him no kind of thing. Uh, and I, I think we maybe have gotten that back on track and uh, not dwindling down the deal because it was going to go down from like a 40K deal to like a probably 15K if uh, without. So. so it could be good. Excited. Yes, I actually uh, I got an email today from someone who I uh, met with in Ohio. Uh, took him out to dinner. He's like, I just can't do this now. So uh, I, I I may have lost a deal for the meantime. I uh, was kind of bummed about that, but that's that's real life. That's how it goes. Um, built a good relationship with him, so I, I think um, I think he'll come back around. He's not totally off of it, but. Um, he, I think he was kind of stressed. He's got a few things happening. So um, that's, that's you know, you win you win some. Hopefully you win some more than you lose some. In this case, this morning I got an email saying I'm, I have lost one for, for the for the near term. <laughs> yeah. So hey, it's all good. My buddy tells me they, they always come back around, you know, just uh, don't burn any bridges. Yep, totally. Totally. So um, I've got a few housekeeping things um, as usual. And as, as Henry said, uh, this is being talked about on social. Uh, you can use that hashtag. It's also using a hashtag, hashtag is a great way to network and connect with some others who are in sales, uh, who are interested in, in crushing it and uh, being successful in their, in their sales career. So make sure and use that hashtag. Um, if you have questions as we're talking, put them in the message box, bottom right of the lab. Um, we'll see those. We can respond to them. Additionally, um, you know, collectively, Henry and I kind of agreed after episode one last week that as you have, as you want to join, and and uh, our seat is open. So as you want to join by video, please come and join us. Uh, share your experiences as they relate to things that we're talking about. You're more than welcome to as as those things come up. So you don't have to wait till the very end. We thought it was really cool last week when we had Chris and Andrew just kind of share their their stories about how they leverage different techniques to uh, close, close the deal, close the sale. Uh, so please, um, as questions come in, as thoughts come in and you want to join, feel free and do that. Absolutely. Also, if, if, you're, um, if you're connected to social, please share this out as well. Share the show. Uh, you can do that top left, I believe. So, Henry? Should we get awesome. into it? Yes. Let's go. What so, are we talking about um, today? Yeah, so today, guys, we're going to talk about uh, professional development. And uh, specifically, you know, Sh Sean and I are, are obviously, you know, pretty passionate about this. And, and actually kind of how we we met is is through just our, our love of professional development. Sean was writing a blog post uh, on Medium in regards to uh, some, some sales topics. And 
I had a comment for it. And from there, you know, we're now at, you know, the real sales talk podcast. So, um, so, uh, so today we're going to talk about, you know, a few different ways to kind of grow, uh, within your career, you know, books, podcasts, seminars, social media, mentors, et cetera. And, and I think this is going to be a really good, uh, chat you know for people to kind of chime in because obviously you know Sean and I are, are not the the kings of you know all things professional development um so I'd love to hear you know who, who what you guys think of in terms of the best your favorite books or podcasts uh etc to you know kind of learn from and help you know grow yourself as uh as salespeople out there so yeah this will be a very particip- participatory one because everyone's got their own tricks and tips and things that they do to kind of hack away and make time for uh, professional development. Yeah. So, so, uh, so Sean, I'll let you start. I mean, I think, I think, you know, we had books as the, as the first one that, that we were talking about. I mean, I'd love if you, you know, maybe share a book or two, share, you know, mm-hmm. you know, some of the things that you took away from maybe that book or two that has helped you in your, your career. Yeah. So, um, uh, so there's a couple of books. Um, I, I kind of assumed that that uh, uh, you were going to probably share the Ask Gary V book. So I, I thought of two others that I've recently read within the last uh, three, four months uh, that I think are, are worth talking about, worth dialoguing about, and, and I highly, highly recommend. Um, they've been valuable to me in many, many ways ways. Uh, of course, I've implemented things that I've, that I've uh, learned from, from these two books. The first one is by uh, a sales coach called Mike Weinberg. And he, he, he's got a couple of books that he, he's written, but the one that I recently read is called Sales Management Simplified. Um, he also has another one, which I haven't read, but I think, you know, follows a similar structure, but with a different audience in mind. It's called Sales simplified, but the sales management one um, is 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 all about how to manage sales teams and how to manage them effectively. Some of the key components to uh, managing an effective sales team. Um, a couple of things that stick out to me about this one are um, uh, one-on-ones, um, the importance of one-on-ones, consistent one-on-ones, and managing. Uh, salespeople differently depending on where they're at in their quota. If they're meeting their quota, uh, he suggests that it's a very short meeting um, because they're doing everything that they need to clearly. Um, it's just talking about what's in the pipeline, what's coming down, uh, what's what's in the funnel. Uh, but beyond that, he, he, he recommends not going too deep into how many calls are you making? How many contacts did you get? What's your what's your call to contact ratio? You know, yeah. those sort of things. He, he suggests reserving those conversations for salespeople that are not meeting their quota. Uh, clearly, if they're not meeting their quota, something missing from their process. And um, uh, it's important to, to discuss or identify what exactly is, you know, missing from that, that formula. So, mm-hmm. so Mike Weinberg, he's, he's actually very responsive on Twitter, I know for sure. I've had several interactions with him. I actually had him take a look at my 2016 business plan that I wrote out, things that I wanted to accomplish this year personally. Um, So I I wrote it out, sent it to him. I said, hey, would you give me some feedback on this? Let me know what you think. Um, uh, And that's actually a third thing that he recommends in the book for managers to do for their salespeople, which is to create a business business plan, things, things that, that, uh, that, that uh, salespeople want to accomplish, actually, and actually keeping them accountable to those things. It's a, it's a really good way to manage people. So the second one is, so, so, yeah, go ahead. Can, can I, can I kind of slow you down on that one? So I, and this is a, a little bit of a tangent, but I'd be, I'd be interested in hearing it because I think it kind of goes along with it. Your business plan, what, what were like, um, what were things in your business plan, uh, and then what were what was the, the feedback that you received? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so one um, one of the things that um, you know, so, so there there are three criteria for for, for business plan that he pulling up the so I can actually post a document. I posted a blog article on it, but I think I have a document. You're breaking well. up. Uh, I don't know uh, if it's me or you. But. 
Probably uh, me. Probably me. So can you hear me okay yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so Mike Mike Weinberg suggests five five uh, five areas. Number one is goals. So this is probably more like high level. Uh, number two is strategy, how you're going to get there. Um, tactics is number three. So specific actions that you're going to take. Um, and then you've got obstacles to success. And then lastly is, is personal and professional development. So uh, the, those are the five things. I'll run through those one more time in case you're writing these things down. And, and maybe for someone who's taking notes, you can type them in the message box. The first one is goals. So this is probably like a 30,000 foot view. Uh, so, so for me, um, I, I wanted to, to uh, exceed my sales quota by 200% this year. So that was my goal. I, I, I know that a, several other, I'm at a new company right now. I started in January. So I know that several other people had, had done that. And um, I thought that that was a good place to start because I knew that it was uh, something that I could accomplish. So we're talking about like a, like a high level 30,000 foot view. Um, uh, number two is strategy. Uh, so, so this is, this is more like maybe like a, a, a 20,000 or 15,000 foot view of, of exactly, um, you know, how you're going to get there. Um, and then number three is tactics, which would be like ground level. These, these are your, you know, this is, this is ground level strategy, breaking it down into incremental actions that you need to take so, so can, go ahead give us the, the the quick and dirty of, of each so yeah your twenty thousand foot is double yes your so strategy like is what your tactics are. budget my strategy mm -hmm. is is so here's what i wrote down for my strategy i'm going to quickly learn uh my company's product line sharpen my sales story and determine what activities produce the results that will get me to my revenue goal Okay. That's my strategy. My tactics mm -hmm. are close eight deals a month, do 20, 20 demos monthly. So that's like, like essentially five a week or one daily um, and uh, uh, 400 cold calls monthly, 100, 100 a week, 25 daily. And then uh, mm -hmm. there's, a, uh, th there's a monthly sales revenue uh, tied to that as well. So that's tactics. Fascinating. Gotcha. My, okay. My obstacles are, you know, the product learning curve, determining what activities create results, you know, because I'm essentially going in blind, uh, you know, not not knowing much and not knowing different variables, um, and then and then uh, upcoming time commitments with uh, a new baby. So my my wife my wife and I are expecting a boy due in May. Oh wow. Then so, I don't think you even told me that. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the blast <laughs> place that you have to hear about it, Henry. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, do in, in May at the end of May. So my my wife is uh, my wife is feeling very pregnant right now. <laughs> so this this will be our second. Um, JD, you know all about kids since you've got two uh, two boys. But um, you know, like just just the commitments that it takes to to you know manage uh, manage. It's like a very business term to manage a new kid, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to have a new new addition to the family and, you know, sleepless nights and how that impacts, you know, productivity during the workday. So that's gotcha. obstacles. Those, those are my three obstacles, per, per, personal and professional development. I'll probably get to some of these here later in the show. Um, but uh, sign up for Toastmasters by Q1. I've got to read a book a month which I've been doing successfully so far. Um, I also want to create a blog post a week. I've been actually doing that. I, I'm, I'm very impressed. This was one of the things that I thought, gosh, this is going to be stretching for me, but, but, but um, I thought I could accomplish it. I'm doing that so far. And then uh, find a sales coach by quarter three of this year. So those are mine. There you go. That's, that's, that's my business plan. Awesome. Yes. There we go. Yeah, that's a little bit of a tangent. Uh, yeah, so sorry to take a tangent, from that, but, I, but yeah, I, I thought it was good. To, it would be good to hear. Yes, totally. So um, we're talking about books, right? So yep. So my my yeah, my second book I would probably recommend that I think has has been really valuable to me is um, uh, Selling to Big Companies by Jill Conrad. 
Okay. Bill's very seasoned. She's uh, she's a sales coach and trainer as well. And my wife just joined. Hello, Heidi. Love you, sweetie. Um, so uh, Joe Conrath is a sales coach and trainer. Um, she used to work for IBM. Uh, so she's used to, to selling for big companies. She, she also targets big companies as a sales consultant and trainer. So she had a lot of really good, good ideas on how to reach uh, important and busy people. Um, I, really, I really liked what she had to say. Um, gave me some interesting things to think about. Uh, one, of, one of my biggest takeaways and one of the things that I wrote about in a Medium blog post is um, knowing how to succinctly communicate your value proposition. So in other words, it's not what you sell but rather what problem your company, your product, your service solves. What problem do you solve? This mm -hmm. is one of the big takeaways because, you know, um, here in, in a very concise way, I thought was really valuable. Um, you've got to qu quickly, when you're, when, you're, when you're talking to C-level, when you're talking to VPs, um, they're busy. They have a lot of, um, they, they have a, a, a a lot of things that are grabbing their attention. And so you may only have 15 seconds on the phone with them if you're cold calling them. And so quickly communicating what problem that you solve for companies just like theirs is really important to communicate succinctly. So that, that's my, that was my, my, my big takeaway for that particular book. Cool. Gotcha. All right. Um, so uh, on mine, uh, I had a few that I, that I had listed. I'm going to pick the top two out of those. Um, and I think one of them, one of them I think is a little off base. Like people wouldn't think of it as a sales book, but um, right. it really didn't help me. So I'm going to talk about that. I'll do that one second. Um, the first one is The Art of Negotiation by Herb Cohen, um, which, I, no, sorry, You Can Negotiate Anything by Herb Cohen. Sorry. Uh, which I read a long time ago, actually. I read it probably, like, I think I was in college at that, at that point in time. Um, but it just had a, a, a large impact on my life in really everything that I do um, because I think there's sales in so many different walks of life. Um, but essentially, it helped me kind of develop this mindset of anything that you really want to accomplish you can accomplish, right? You just have to know how to approach it, right? Um, and one of the big takeaways from it that I got was never take no from somebody who can't tell you yes. Right? So in you know everyday life, that's maybe you know you asking for a discount from somebody at you know the coffee shop, and they're like, no, I can't do that. It's like, well, you know, I need to talk to the manager, right? Because the person at the at the counter. Maybe not be able to give it the discount, but somebody can. There, there's 100% somebody can give you a discount. So I think that's like, you know, everyday life version of it. But you had, a, um, you had a real story about this. You had a real, real takeaway from uh, airline, right? You did this with an airline recently. What, when was, what, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's so funny. You were traveling somewhere and you, you were talking about on Snapchat about how um, you asked someone. Uh, they, they wanted oh, to charge yeah. you a chain or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, all right. It, it, airline change fees, like, like everybody, you know, they say like, it's going to be you know, $200 or something like that uh, on the website. That's like what, what they quote. So I was in, I think I was in, actually in Chicago. I had a layover overnight layover in Chicago and I was coming back from, I think Mexico. Um, so essentially I get to, I get to the Chicago airport. Um, and I had that overnight layover, but I didn't have a hotel room or anything. So I'm like, well, this sucks when I'm either gonna have to go buy it, pay for a hotel room or, you know, just sleep on the floor here. Neither one sounded like a good option. So I go to the, like, um, to, I try to go to the, the, uh, the cashier, not the cashier, but the, the, you know, the people at the, at the desk and they're like, well, just go to the, to the, uh, machine and you can do a change there. And I'm like, Oh man, well you can't negotiate with a machine. So uh, I go there and the lady and and the lady's like trying to walk me through it, and she's like, well, "It's going to be two hundred dollars. That's just how it is." And I'm like, "That's not true." So whatever. Uh, and so I'm like, <laughs> so 
So I walk over to, uh, so I'm, like, I'm just going to go inside and try to find somebody else to talk to. So I go in, you know, I go through security and I get to you know, just some random gate and I ask the lady, you know, hey, can I, you know, change my flight? And she's like, well, it's going to be $75. So I'm like, already, already right there. I'm like, oh, oh I saved on it 25, you know, like just like talking to somebody. Um, and then I'm like, oh, are you sure? Like, you know, you sure I, it has to be $75? Like, I really wouldn't want to pay this. And she's like, she's like, yeah, like we're going to have to do $75. I'm like, all right, well, let me get back to you. Because I'm like, hey, at, at the very least, I've saved 75 That's less than a hotel room. It's worth it. Um, but so then I went down a little bit further down the hall. I just went to another gate and asked another lady. And she's like, it's $275. I'll let you go. And she got me over for free. So I went from 200 to zero and an overnight stay to getting home at like 9, 9 o'clock nice. at night. So it's just, you know, keep asking, right? It's, it's just the kind of the, the idea of, there is, especially if you know they can say, you know, there's, there's, there's there, you can always get a yes. Like there's a, a yes is typically available to you. It's just a matter of are you asking the right person, or is your pitch right as, as you were talking about before, right? Um, and and I so that was huge just in terms of just changing my mindset about life. Um, and um, a, a, another one, uh, another book that that I that I'd recommend, and this is the one that's not you know as sales focus is the four hour work week. So, um, I read that, I've read that twice in my life. So the, the first one, the first time was years back and I didn't really apply anything. It was like one of those times where you, you know, just read random, you know, professional development books and never do anything with it, which I think is terrible. I think, you know, you gotta, you gotta implement. Right? Um, but this time I did implement and, and it were two take two big takeaways I had from that book was, Number one, Pareto's law, and the other one is the Parkinson principle, or, or it could be Pareto's principle and Parkinson's law. Yeah, I think it's that <laughs> way. Um, but essentially, right? So, P- Pareto, the Pareto principle is what everybody knows as the eighty twenty rule. It's that you know, eighty percent of results come from twenty percent of your effort. So it made me start to reevaluate some of the work that I'm doing on a day to day basis, right? So I'll just give one example to that, but. Um, at my company, we have like cold callers who pretty much do call, calls for us um, daily, right? Um, what I what I recognized is that most of the the people they set me up on calls with, I knew which ones were going to become a deal, right? Like if the person had like you know fifteen servers, they would never buy, they're never going to buy from us, you know, ninety percent of the time. So I'll, I'll talk to them, but like it, I'm not going to allocate a long period of time to it. Um, the same, the same goes for like nonprofit school districts and things like that. They don't really buy from us. So I'll talk to them, but like, I know that's not where I want to put my focus, but I know hospitals, you know, banks and things like that. That's, that's my 20%. And that's where 80% of my, my, uh, revenue goes up. So I want to focus there. Um, and then the other one is Parkinson's law, uh, which essentially it says that any activity that you the, any amount of time you give to an activity is how long you will take to do it. So, you know, back in school when the teacher said you have a week to do this project, it took you a week because you started the night before. Um, and the same goes for anything in, in day to day life. So one thing I've done is email instead of saying, all right, I do email all day. I do email three times a day for one hour or like 30 minutes, one hour twice and then 30 minutes one time. So I 10 a.m. 4 p.m. and then 1:30 right after right after uh, lunch, and I crush my email. I'm always on inbox zero because 90 99 percent of the time people don't need you know responses in real time. If they do, they would have called my cell phone, um, and I can just crush through all of the activity that they need me to do during that time. So, uh, and it's a lot more focused and allows me to get a lot more things done. So I know I talked for a while there, but those were, have definitely been my top two. Um, What's your? Do you prefer an actual physical book, or do you prefer like a like a Kindle or some sort of online book? Yeah, so, so I'm an audio book guy. Um, I, I there's there's books that I want to read, but they don't they're not on Audible, and therefore I haven't read them yet. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. what about you? Um, I'm a Kindle guy, uh, or or just you know like I always have this thing with me. Um, yeah. 
and usually on planes, that's that's one of my best times to read through books. Um, you know, my wife goes to bed pretty early, uh, so when I when I get into bed, um, I, I can't read a physical book. You know, so it's dark, and a light turning a light it will wake her up. So the Kindle works really well for me because when I'm when I'm laying down in bed at night, uh, if I want to, you know dedicate 15 minutes of my time before I actually go to sleep to reading or when I'm on a plane, it's a lot easier. Like, you, you know how it is when you travel, like you, you put everything in your, your bag, your, your satchel, um, you, you, it just gets really heavy. And so I try and travel light, you know, since this, this can do, you know, a lot more than just, you know, text and call. Um, I have my books on there that I go through and read. There you go. There you go. And so, what, so about, what about those on the line? Uh, any, any any recommendations for those that are on the line, JD, Rob? Uh, any books that you might recommend? Were you going to add something, Henry? Um, so I, I I was actually I I'll let them go here. I was actually going to talk about. Um, so you were saying that you do a lot of reading on 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 uh, airlines. I was going to say I, I typically write. I've been writing. I'm, I can't say I typically do, but I'm trying to write more. Because I think it's a good time where my mind is um, away from everything else. Because airline Wi-Fi is the worst, uh, unless you're on JetBlue. So you know, I typically can't get much work done. So I'll spend time just like writing out my thoughts and things like that. And and it made me made me wonder. I want to get a, a better um, idea from you in regards to your writing, right? So you, I know you're doing um, uh, a blog a week. Um, you know, what's been your experience with it? Uh, you know, you said you were surprised that you were getting it done. Uh, you know, yeah. would love to hear about you know the difficulty of it, what you've learned, what you've gotten from it, that kind of stuff. Um, I can say there's there's two hacks uh, that have helped me accomplish this goal so far this year. One of them is um, what I do. I actually um, reading a book a month and blogging actually go hand in hand for me. So what I typically do is when I'm reading through a book, I make I make notes or, or you know I dog ear, I dog ear the pages, mm -hmm. and and then I go back to those things, the takeaways, and I write about them. I write about my takeaways from that book. Um, that's actually a really great content producer for me. It's dual fold, right? So I'm reading through the books, mm -hmm. I'm learning new things, and then uh, from that from what I've learned, I'm also so creating content from that. So I usually try and do that um, on Sunday or Monday nights. Um, you know, Sunday night because it's kind of, you know, the end of a, of a full week. Um, it's a little bit quieter. Um, I can usually, after family goes to bed, I can just pound it out. On the planes as well, actually, that's, a, that's been a really good time for me to also write a lot. I can usually in, in one trip, I can pound out two blog posts. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing one right now about the power of, of tonality, using tonality when in sales, when you talk with someone, how you could say, hi, you could say, hi, or you could say, hi, and the differences between them and, and the responses that you get from people. So uh, I, I started working on that on the flight over here to San Diego. Mm -hmm. a a a any, uh, at any sneak peek to what, what you're talking about there? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's, three, there's three things here that I think are, are really key. Let me see if I can, if I can pull up the, the component. Actually, I think there's four. There's four things that I think are pretty valuable when considering tone, tonality. When you're talking with someone, and this is this is really probably probably centered around um, when you're talking with someone for the first time. So, but but I suppose you could also use use these things um, when you're uh, when you're talking with anyone else. Um, Oh yeah, I remembered it was it was here. Uh, so so introductions when you're introducing yourself with someone for the first time, um, uh, when you're asking questions, when you're making statements, and when you're trying to mirror some someone someone others someone's um, 
uh, how how they're acting or responding. Um, you know, and I'll just take take like the second the last one. You know, if someone clearly looks sad or sounds sad, you're probably not going to um, speak with a with a um, you know a, a a high up tone at the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, yeah. a, a ending a sentence with a high tone usually infers like enthusiasm, excitement, positivity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a low tone at the end of uh, a, a, a statement or a question can infer seriousness, sadness, focus. Um, mm -hmm. And then no tone like monotone usually means disinterest or dissatisfaction or boredom. And so thinking about how you're wording those things. Um, uh, really is key to getting the right response out of someone when you're talking to them. Um, you know, gotcha. I find this happens to be really key when you're cold calling someone. You know, it's it's the first impression. Yeah. You know, having an uptone. You know, when you're asking a question, or, or particularly mm. when you're asking a question, is really key. So yeah, that that's a little sneak peek. Okay, and you know, kind of thinking about that, and I'm I'm watching the guys live chat over here. Um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with the podcast um, Entrepreneur on Fire, but mm -hmm. um, if you've ever oh, listened is it, to is it, it, is, is it, yeah, is it kind of, John, yeah, John Lee Dumas, yeah. So essentially, it's a it's a daily podcast uh, where he interviews entrepreneurs, right? Um, so and in that, you'll notice, like, so he's so high energy every single every single podcast, um, and yeah. I've listened to like a podcast where he was interviewed. And that was something that he talked about, right? It's like he tries to make sure he's very high energy because he knows that's what's best for his audience. So if he comes very high energy, it's almost it's almost weird if somebody doesn't mirror it back to him, right? So that he so he presents a certain you know energy that is done for the uh, for the podcast. P P P T Live Guy is actually mentioning another great podcast. Mixture. So kind of moving, I guess, into the podcast realm of things, though. I, I'm, I'm a huge podcast guy as well. I guess, you know, audio is my way, right? Audible, um, mm -hmm. you know, it now podcast, right? Um, and in terms of that, I, I mean, there's there's excellent podcasts that I, that I listen to. But the one thing that I've, I've gathered, like, I do a little bit of, um, and one of the reasons I, you know, hate the read books, never use them, never implement anything thing is, you know, sometimes we get into the aspect of learning things and never using them. Um, so I, I kind of find that I do that sometimes with podcasts, but last night um, I was, I was coming home from, from work. Uh, it was like nine o'clock, nine 30. I went out to drinks with uh, a colleague, with some colleagues and I was tired and I'm talking to one of my friends and he's like, man, I, um, I'm, I'm good. He's like, I've been up since three in the morning, but I'm fine. And I was like, you know what? I got to figure this out. I got to figure this whole energy thing out because I, I shouldn't be tired. If he's been up since three and I, I've been up since you know eight. There's no way I should be tired and he's not. So uh, I went and listened to this podcast. Uh, it's called The Competitive Edge last night. Um, and I, it was about energy, about how to you know, garner more energy. And, and one of the things, and um, I forgot the guy's name who talked on it, who they interviewed. But one of the things he talked about was working out in the morning versus – you know, the afternoon or, um, you know, or, or any other time, right? Because it, it helps to, um, I think it was like something with the hormones or, or I don't remember exactly, exactly what it was, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to work out. I'm going to work out in the morning. And I feel amazing right now. <laughs> it also could be because I haven't had any drinks today, but <laughs> <laughs> but I think it also has to do with working out in the morning because I feel, I feel amazing. So. By the way, um, PT... Live guy, Rob is his name. Rob is in physical therapy. So Rob's got a, probably a pretty good understanding about how the body responds to certain things. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, and, and, and Rob, Rob said the heart, it gets the heart rate up. So, yep. and, and the endorphin. So yeah, man, I, I think I'm going to, I mean, I've always enjoyed it. Um, you know, working out in the morning, because, uh, you know, by, by like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you, you see people kind of strolling into work and you're like, yeah, well, you know, I've, I've, I've done, you know, more than you've done, you know, you're going to do all day. And, I'm, <laughs> and it's only 10 a.m. <laughs> so I know it makes you feel good, I guess. Um, but also the energy aspect of it is, is amazing for me so far. So, 
Yep. Any any are you podcast guy? Any podcast I, recommendations? I yeah. So so my my hack is you know probably like like most people on the on the uh, line here. You have busy lives. Uh, uh, most of us probably have other things outside of work that we're responsible for. Be it you know the the young black professionals network that you're heading up, Henry, mm-hmm. or you know be it children. Uh, you know, significant other spouses and so on. Uh, my my hack is I, I do listen to podcasts and I almost exclusively listen to them in two different situations. Number one is when I'm driving to work and on the way home, I can usually fit in about 20 to 25 minutes worth, you know, each each trip. Um, uh, so So driving to and from work and then when I'm doing housework, so washing the dishes, Washing the car, you know that sort of stuff. Those are those are my hacks for getting through podcasts. And I wanted to recommend a couple that I that I that I like quite a bit. Um, you, you haven't you haven't mentioned um, Gary Vaynerchuk yet, Henry. So I'm gonna have to throw him in here. So so um, Ask Gary V podcast, highly recommend. Uh, so JD's given given his as well. Um, Ask Gary V podcast, Sell or Die is. A podcast podcast by Jeffrey Gittimer, and I think her name is Jen Gluckow. Um, that's a solid one. I really like that. They're not producing as much as maybe I would like. Like, I, you know, I can crush through a podcast in a day, usually. Um, yeah. Ask Gary V, uh, Rob says. <laughs> um, and, and then the other one is a sales guy. That's by Keenan, uh, or Jim Keenan. Um, he's got a solid one. He's he's kind of taken the Gary Vaynerchuk uh, show style, and he'll in he'll he'll answer questions from, from Twitter. Um, his his uh, hashtag that he uses is um, Hey Keenan hashtag Hey Keenan. And so when, when you can go and search that, and you'll find other salespeople asking him questions. He's good. He's from Boston. So he's got that Boston flair, um, very, very upfront. Very, he that. is. He is. Okay. Yeah, he's in. He lives in Denver, but he's from Boston originally. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, yeah, Keenan. Uh, hey, Keenan. Hashtag Hey, Keenan. You can go search that and, and uh, you know, probably find his uh, recordings, his blabs. But, yeah, he, he puts his stuff up on, on podcasts as well. He hasn't done it in a while. I don't know why. But um, that's that's. That's usually the only way that I'll listen to it. He does a blab, like he does his show on on blab, and then he'll usually take it and he'll put it on um, iTunes podcast. So I haven't listened to his show in a while because I haven't put up his stuff on on podcast lately. But those are those are my two that I, that I can recommend, and um, my two opportunities to do it are usually driving to and from work, and then while I'm doing house chores. Yeah, I haven't quite figured out times very well. I, I I just listen to them anytime I get anytime I get a chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, so I have one more that that I'll, I'll recommend, uh, and it is not necessarily it's, a, it's from the same podcast, the Competitive Edge, which actually sadly is is no longer in production. Um, but a really good uh, one episode that he did. Um, what was was amazing? It was with the guy from um, Storefront. Is, is the name of the the company that the guy is from that he interviewed? Um, and mm-hmm. it was all about like how to growth hack sales. Um, at the beginning of at the beginning of a company. Um, so so essentially, um, Storefront is a um like a a a, a, a website where you can where you can book, um, like it's like an Airbnb for, for storefronts, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and essentially what you could do with it is, and I'm sorry, I'm looking, I'm looking for, the, for the podcast here, so that's why I'm, I'm stuttering a bit. But, but essentially what you could do with, with what he talked about on this uh, podcast, and it's, it's number 52 on the competitive chart, so I just found it. But essentially what he talks about on it is how to use web scraping to better – grow your business, right? So his example was they were looking for storefronts that they could uh, call in. And if they're not using it currently, can we do pop-up shops there and put this on our website? So they, they, he scraped Yelp 
to find like all the storefronts. And then just, you know, from there, he was able to get all the people's phone numbers, locations, things like that. Um, but it can be applied to a lot of different websites. If you think about, you know, web scraping, right? Like what's an industry that you're in? Can you scrape the website from that industry? Um, and then therefore use the, those names or companies to call in. I tried to do it with the Inc. 5000. That was my idea. It's a little more difficult. Web scraping is a, a little bit of a task. Um, it's, but, uh, but, but good, good, good ideas. Uh, I just haven't been able to execute on them. Uh, JD throwing in some, some amazing ones here. The Art of Charm is, is a really good one. I, I listened to one a while back about uh, negotiating salary, which was a, a good one. And uh, you know what? I, I'll, um, I'll find some of the, I'll find these so I can, uh, give these out to you guys. Um, the Tim Ferriss show also with Jane Fox. Amazing, amazing episode. Uh, I'm actually going to go listen to the, the Tony uh, Robbins one later today. Again, I'm, I'm on this energy hook right now. So Tony mm -hmm. Robbins talked about that in that episode. So awesome. Some good ones in there. <laughs> really good ones in there. Yeah. I, I just, while you were talking, I was, I was going through subscribing to some of these that, that are coming in. So this is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you can get lost in in in, in these stuff. So, but uh, <laughs> but um, I think I think another one. Um, and I know we only have ten ten minutes here. So, um, so Sean, if you, if you don't mind me mind me uh, skipping around here, I, I I wanted to, unless you unless there's one that you want to really talk about, I wanted to hop onto social media, um, because for me, um, I think we can talk a lot about you know, obviously books, right. Um, uh, seminars was another one that was on there. Mentors, another one that's on there. But I think those are almost timeless, right? They've been here for ages. So there's a lot of different places to kind of get some ideas about that on. But I think social media is, is something that kind of stands out to like our time and something that a lot of salespeople aren't talking about or doing, right? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about like what I've been ga gaining from social media, right? Um, but also, yeah, really what I've been gaining from social media. For example, our, our friendship, right? Uh, finding you on Medium, you know, being able to develop this friendship, being able to develop this podcast, and therefore, you know, being able to talk out some of these ideas that we're having in regards to sales. Um, but I think there's other places that uh, I hope, I assume most of the people here are, 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 are engaged in a bit, but may not be very familiar with all the people there, is like something like Snapchat, right? Um, following people like Morgan, Morgan, Brown, Morgan B. 180, amazing stuff he has there. Mark Suter, amazing stuff he's doing on there. Um, John Lee Dumas, amazing stuff he's doing on Gary V. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of hop more into the social media aspect because I think with only 10 minutes left, maybe it makes sense to uh, to hop into to, to, to what's left there. Any yeah. advice? Yeah. Um in, in regards to social media, there's a, there's a few ways that I, that I kind of hack, hack away. Um, um, I, I, I just, I don't know why, but this, the, the, I'm in a season of life where just life is just extremely busy. Um, you know, from when I wake up to, to when I go to bed late, it, my time is taken up. So I really have had to get creative with how I continue to add to the tool belt so that I can continue to sell more and better. Um, so, so I, I just, I've known about this feature for a while, but I've just started to do this with, with some specific people on Twitter and some other places, but turning on notifications has been major key for me for, for people that I, that I really want their content. So, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk is, is one of those that I've turned on notifications for, for almost all of his content, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, Mike Weinberg is another one that that, that I turned on recently, uh, so that I'm getting updates, push notifications to me when he tweets something new. Um, and uh, there's another guy named Jeb Blount, J E B B L O U N T. Um, uh, so there's a few guys that I really, I really um, try and try and siphon as much as I can from. Uh, so notifications is is really key, and I think I mentioned the names that I wanted to, yeah, that I wanted to kind of shout out as far as uh, people that I that I follow and try and 
uh, gain content from. But um, yeah, so so um, life is just really busy. So I, I don't subscribe to a lot um, of of people's notifications, but um, I, I try and be really focused in in specific when it comes to that. Yeah, I I, I think that's a, I, I I've been doing it too. Gary V. I have um, I have some other like uh, Mark Suster, um, uh, Tristan Walker. I have on. Yeah, there's 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 some amazing ones. Oh, hello fold. I heard about this guy. So JD just wrote about uh, hello fold on Snapchat. Um, I heard about him today. Uh, I forgot who put him up. Oh, Morgan Morgan Brown actually, one of the guys I just recommended. Morgan B one eighty is his Snapchat. Um, but he had hello take over his Snapchat. They did like a Snapchat transfer, right, or Snapchat swat or whatever they call him. Um, Morgan took over his hello supposed to be taking over Morgan's. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to hearing more about this guy because he's, um, uh, I'm hearing about him everywhere, which is always a good sign. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Anything else, John, um, that you wanted to, to, to chime on? Um, so, uh, I'll just kind of quickly throw out some seminars. Um, I haven't been one to 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 invest into these but i th i think i'm getting to the point in my career where um you know i'm mastering some of these other areas that we've already talked about and i really will seriously consider pay it's like paying out of my own pocket uh for some of these and and, and i guess suppose i could, could try and lobby to get my company to pay for some of these as a way to network uh and and grow business but sales hawk sales hacker has one that that just passed that I really want to I want to go to and, and take a look at. Sales Hacker has one uh, that I think happened in February. Um, InsideSales.com has has one called like the Acceleration Conference or something like that. Um, it's an in person one that I really like to go to. They also have an online one that they do um, that's pretty big. But um, you know, in regards to seminars, those are a couple that that I I've been looking at and considering investing some some money into. Um, but and and also well, I wanted to touch on mentors since this one is kind of tied to my business plan, and I'd love to get okay. your insight and feedback. So originally, I was I was talking about um, or I was thinking about getting getting like an actual mentor, um, and and I, I still want to do that, but I, I'm thinking that this year I'm getting so much value from, from um, Ask Gary V show as well as his, um, you know, his, his behind the scenes uh, vlog that um, I'm like, this actually could be a really different way to look at mentorship. It's, it's an indirect kind of mentorship from, from afar by Gary Vaynerchuk, but I'm learning a ton of stuff and I'm um, getting a lot of insight. So I feel like I'm really benefiting from that. Um, but, um, you know, as, as far as mentors and mentorship, um, it's Gary Vaynerchuk. I mean, hands, hands down because he's creating the content number one, but it's also mm -hmm. really solid content too. So I think yeah. this year um, is, is going to end up being mentorship by Gary V. Uh, cool. However, we, we've actually, you you've been in talks with um, uh, someone uh, re recently that offers a one-on-one -on -one salesperson mentorship service, right? That we're trying to get on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't throw any names yet on it because we haven't locked it in. But um, but I think he'd be awesome. And in, in kind of hearing your business plan, um, maybe somebody really good for you to talk to as well. Because um, he's kind of on my. My my long term plan on you know how I approach uh, sales as well so could be interesting stuff man could be interesting stuff coming down the line. Yep, yep. Um, you 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 saw a couple of emails come through this week. Um, I think that I locked down two. They locked down two more guests for for this season. I think I locked down two more guests for this season. Um, so I'm I'm excited. Like I, I mentioned this last episode but these are people the guests that we were going to have on the show are movers and shakers like they're they're pros and skip you know they're they're professionals in in their in their space some are marketing but with a sales spin some are truly sales 
professionals. They're either running their own businesses and they're selling their 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 consulting or their services or or um, you know these are people who you know are are you know consummate professionals in, in sales. So you'll you'll start to hear more about this. Um, we have our first guest on the show in a couple of weeks on the twenty sixth Tuesday. Um, I guess we can tease it out. We got it locked in. Um, yeah. I guess we'll, we'll tease it out. It's going to be Katie Lance. You can check her out. Um, she's, she's very active on social, um, at Katie Lance and, um, she's a social media strategist. Uh, she runs her own social media, uh, consulting business. And, um, I, I think she's actually had some experience in sales in her earlier days. And of course she's selling her own services right now, but I think, I think she's going to be a really interesting person to have on the show that will provide um, insight from both a marketer's perspective as well as a, a sales perspective. And um, she's, she, she's gonna be talking about how to, let me, let me make sure I got the topic right because she's already given it to me, um, social media strategy for salespeople. So this will be episode, episode four in a couple of weeks, a, a April 2026. 20, so that, that one's gonna be a really, really good one. Uh, we'll have our first guest on the show. Um, and uh, we, we've got some more coming down the line. Yes, so it looks sir. like Rob, Rob's excited about that one. Yes, awesome. Um, yeah, and, and guys, as we do have those uh, guests on, let us know. You know, if there's anybody that you can think of that you'd love to see on on the uh, podcast, uh, any any you know topics that we're covering alone that maybe you'd like us to dive deeper in. Um, you know, feedback is is huge here uh, for us. Um, right, we're, we're salespeople, right? Listen first, talk second. That's what we're going for here. So we want to really listen to what you guys have to say, and uh, and, and you know, counterpunch as uh, the words of Gary V. Cool. Totally. That's it. Uh, oh, we we got it done, huh? Got it done. So hashtag real sales talk, everybody. Please uh, love yep. to uh, connect with you online. I think um, PT Live guy. You said Matt. Is that your name? Rob, your, Rob, Rob, Rob. I think I saw you. Uh, you followed me on uh, on Twitter, so looking forward to connecting there. And uh, here we go, guys. Gonna gonna be some fun. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate it. Um, this will this recording will be up. We'll, we'll, our goal is to get it out in the next forty eight hours after it's recorded. So we we've, we've got episode one already up on YouTube and Blab. Uh, you should have if you're subscribed to our emails received a notification about that. Um, we're working on getting our recordings up on iTunes podcast as well as Stitcher. So be patient, hang with us. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as uh, we get those up on those two latter platforms as well. All right. Thanks again. Have a great evening. And we'll see you next week, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon.